So suppose Anna Hopkins had an unrequited thing for Blanchard. And suppose she thought Janine was the reason it was unrequited. Hell hath no fury like an unrequited lap tap. See what the gossip is around the water cooler. Are you kidding? The only one around here in love with Charles Blanchard is Charles Blanchard. So there was nothing personal between he and Anna Hopkins? Oh, sure there was. He made her nauseous. That's odd, because his wife seems to think women are crazy for him. Oh, well, he's OK until you spend some time with him. The man may not always be right, but he is never wrong, if you know what I mean. He's the feudal lord, and we're all his serfs plowing his fields. Let me ask you this. Did Anna ever mention a reporter named Janine Wilson? Sure. Said she was a nice lady. Foolish, but nice. She thought Janine was wasting her life waiting around for Blanchard. She knew that Janine and Blanchard were having an affair? <laughs> Who didn't? You don't interview someone for an article for four years. So Janine actually came by the lab? Sure, two, three times a week. She left her kid with Anna when she and Blanchard went off to lunch. When was the last time she was here? This time I saw her was a couple weeks ago. He was doing better yesterday. And then this morning, he woke up with a fever of 103. They've released everyone else. I pray to God that bastard rots in jail. I don't know if he will, Janine. I thought my virus was the same as that in the vial. It was. It got into me somehow, damn it. It had to be the injection. You're probably right. So what's the problem? You. What? You told the police that you hadn't seen Anna Hopkins in months. I know that you saw her at the lab just a few weeks ago. Why did you lie? She says she had a paternity test four years ago at Blanchard's insistence. He certainly thinks highly of her. Janine said she wanted to keep the whole thing from her son as long as Blanchard stuck it out with his wife. Mrs. Blanchard know about the child? Janine says absolutely not. Oh, we'll see how long Dr. Blanchard has an alibi after you tell her. After I tell her? Arthur was right. This sort of thing is better handled woman to woman. If you expect me to start throwing dishes, you're mistaken. To be honest, I expected some kind of reaction. Why? Your husband not only cheated on you, but he fathered a child with another woman. I never wanted children. That's not the point. No, your point is that I should feel betrayed, minimized, used. Well, I hate to ruin your day, but I don't. Mrs. Blanchard, most women would... Are fools. Their husband cheats, and their first call is to the divorce attorney. I have to admit that would be my reaction. These are the same fools who stand by their husbands charged with embezzlement or even murder. I'm sorry, but to me, those crimes are a bit more morally reprehensible. Excuse me. Yeah. Sure. Speaking of murder, your husband's son, Tanner, just died. Of course, I remember. Charles and I had dinner in, and then finished working the Sunday crossword puzzle. I think we went to bed around 11. And you sure you're thinking of the night of the 12th, not the 11th, perhaps, or the 13th? Yes, because it was a Monday. That's when we typically work the crossword. Good. Did your husband leave the apartment, let's say, to walk the dog? We don't have a dog. To go to the corner store to get some ice cream? He was home all night. No further questions. Did you know your husband was having an affair? No. How did it make you feel when you found out? I'm human. It hurt. He certainly isn't the first husband to cheat. This wasn't a one-night stand, Mrs. Blanchard. This was a four-year affair. Is there really any difference? 
He had a baby with her, Mrs. Blanchard. What did you have for dinner the night of the 12th? Prime rib. Did you and your husband have wine for dinner that night? Mrs. Blanchard. Yes. I can't do this. My husband is You killed your own son. Objection. He was not home with me that evening. I lied about everything. Chambers, Your Honor. She was your witness, Miss Swan. I know that. What I didn't know was that she'd commit perjury. With which story? She's obviously an emotionally disturbed woman, hell-bent on vengeance. I want a mistrial. On what grounds? A witness's credibility is an issue for the jury. She obviously offered contradictory testimony. From which a jury can infer whatever it pleases. Her testimony was in and of itself a criminal act. I move that you order the jury to disregard it in its entirety. Nice try, Miss Swan. Sorry. Then I want to redirect her. It's your funeral. That was some performance, Mrs. Blanchard. It was the truth. Of course it was. You wouldn't lie under oath. I tried. Your but... conscience, I know. Tell me, Mrs. Blanchard, do you know a Martha Harlow? If you didn't hear the question, she was one of Charles's students. And he had an affair with her. I see. How about Denise Lowell? Do you know her? She's a member of our club. And Charles had an affair with her, too. You caught the two of them in your bed, isn't that right? I'm sorry, I didn't... Yes. And Cheryl Bennett, Lynn Siegel, Lauren Phelps, Madeline Broom. He had affairs with all of them, too, didn't he? Yes. And those are just the ones you know about. God only knows how many others there are. Let me ask you something, Mrs. Blanchard. Doesn't that make you angry? Mrs. Blanchard. Yes. Angry enough to want to get back at him. Yes. Angry enough to do anything. Yes. Even lie, to have him sent to prison. Objection. Overruled. Answer the question. Yes. Now, truthfully, Mrs. Blanchard, was your husband home with you on the night in question? Yes. Chambers! Sorry, Counselor. Choose a story, Mrs. Blanchard, any story. Just try to stick with it, OK? It's obvious what happened, Jack. She tried to lie. She couldn't. Look, thanks to your wife, the jury could go either way on this. I'm willing to offer a you a deal. <laughs> Do I look that stupid? Shut up, Charles. For once in your life, I wish you'd learn to keep that damn mouth of yours shut. Luckily, it doesn't matter. It was all an act, your entire testimony. And I'd like to thank Miss Sutherland for reminding me that the bourgeois fantasies about fidelity and marriage are still running rampant in this country. Excuse me? Oh, you made me realize. It's easier for a jury to believe that a wife would lie to hurt a scoundrel than lie to protect him. That's perjury. Prove it. We don't have to. You already admitted it on the stand. Right, of course I did. But then I corrected myself and told the truth. Whatever that is.